So I'll, I'll try to do this. Um, I'll try to get us from nevus to melanoma molecularly in a half hour and examine some of the new ways that we're looking at spits and blue and the nevus melanoma uh, projection. So what's ahead, how nevi evolve, the different tribes of melanocytic proliferations, and sometimes these have been called taxons or clades. And to give you an idea of tribes, so we have the blue nevic tribe, the deep penetrating nevic tribe, the pigmented spindle cell nevic tribe, and within each one of these tribes, there's benign, intermediate, and high-risk lesions. And uh, some insights from uh, Tolstoy and some comments about Lippens and her stallions. They'll all be in there. So uh, one of the questions that medical students often ask back in the day when we used to teach medical students pathology is what percentage of melanomas arose in nevi? So this convinced the medical students that we were entirely idiots, which is probably why they discontinued the medical student pathology course at UCSF. Wallace Clark, early in his career, said 5%. Bernie Ackerman said 10%. Dick Segeville said 50%. So it's, I told them anywhere between 5 and 50%. Um, so we don't really still know the answer to that, but we do know that there's a genomic progression. And, um, so one of the questions is which moles matter uh, and whether dysplastic nevi evolve into melanomas at a higher rate than other nevi, and that debate is still un unsettled. Um, this is Paul Gerson Una, who did a lot of the early work on nevi, and he regarded them as, as hamartomas, and that was probably because congenital nevi seem to be um, defects in uh, embryonic organization. And so Una thought that at least some melanocytic nevi were hamartomatous. He then looked at acquired lesions and decided that they came from the epidermis, from epidermal melanocytes that dropped into the dermis. And this is called the descending nevus or abtrophung theory of Una. And there's another competing theory, which is that some nevi are ascending nevi, where the melanocytes climb up and sometimes reach the epidermis and sometimes don't. Um, and I'll, I'll position that there's a third possibility that some nevi have a mixture. So how do nevi form? Melanocytes migrate from the neural tube into the epidermis and then sometimes into other organs. And in, uh, in nevus formation, they move along neurovascular bundles, and that's why we sometimes see a candelabra-like pattern in the ascending form of nevus. In the descending form, they proliferate at the junction and then drop down into the dermis. So both of these types of growth are probably possible, and sometimes you can see a mixture of both patterns in the same thing. So this is the dropping down theory, and we can see evidence of that in the common lentiginous compound nevus where melanocytes drop down into the dermis. This is the ascending type of nevus where melanocytes migrate along neurovascular bundles and then some may reach the junction. Um, if you look at this and try to explain it by the dropping down theory, you'd have to say that, okay, some of these cells here proliferate and then they drop like a rock into the dermis, and that really doesn't make much sense if you look at the size of this nest and the size of that nest. So this is very differently from the way I was trained. I was trained to call this a congenital pattern nevus rather than an ascending nevus, but if you look at small nevi with this pattern, almost all of them are, uh, are acquired either in early childhood or in late childhood or teenage years and aren't truly congenital lesions. Here's a lesion with both patterns, an ascending pattern in the center and a descending pattern at the periphery. Um, here's the descending pattern, cells dropping off, 